What's up, guys? We're live at the 41st National. Contenders Optic, a nice Kyle Lowry color card there. Mm, Looks like we got a redemption. redemption. We got a redemption, guys. And the redemption is a John ja Morant rookie Ooh, there season. We go. Red. John ja Morant, let's go. John ja Morant rookie season ticket red. Let's go, everybody. That's, That's awesome. awesome. That's awesome. That's a huge man. card. We're going to see if we can hit that LeBron. Joe. Mine. In the house. Is he opening? Right. Are you opening? Yeah, do you want me to go? Yep. All right, I'm just going to grab the next pack, pass it down. All right, here we go. This box was okay, um, but... We want to try the other one, you know. We want to try the other one, yeah. I think the you other one, double down? Dude, You're crazy. I, I ain't got the strength. There's no right. chance. Jamal Mashburn. All right, come on, come on. Brian Grant. Come on. The last guy. Oh! I just got dizzy. Oh my God! We pulled it. We pulled the LeBron. We pulled the. Oh my God! We did it. The last pack. What is going down, everyone? It's time for the hype episode number one ninety nine point five, the national edition, the recap. So we got a lot of stuff to talk about. What happened? What we pulled? Uh, what we did it was crazy it was a crazy couple days and at the end of the show we're going to be talking to mike fruitman from mike's stadium sports cards we uh visited his shop he was very uh you know showing us his shop and we had some some great dinner with him i think dan had some buffalo balls i had some buffalo balls denver Anyways, baby we, denver uh, denver's an amazing place his shop's in aurora so you got to check it out but we have a Phenomenal interview with him at the end of the show. And you may ask, why is it 199.5? Because we're not quite ready for episode 200. I hope I didn't crush too many dreams of you guys out there that were waiting for the for the bottles to be popped and everything. But we just got back to the National. We got like a, we had a couple days to prepare for the show. So we're going to do it big. We got big plans for episode 200. Lots of giveaways as well as just some crazy stuff. We're going to blow your mind and you're going to celebrate with us. Dan, what's going down? Uh, feeling good, man. Are you? you back. Ready? Back. 100%? Uh, move. Am I really ever 100%? I don't know. Uh, 90, 92. Okay. I actually like how you went 90, one, 199.5. Kind of felt like you were doing like a radio call sign. But mm. the dial doesn't the go. The FM dial. It does, the dial doesn't go up to 199. KSJL 92.3 on the FM dial. Um, but anyways. <laughs> well, that, well, that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> Rock it all your hits here yeah, now. Um, but no, we got a lot to talk about. I mean, it was a whirlwind of a national. Uh, what were some of the, before we kick this off, you're going to see some of the stuff in the slides here. If you guys are watching it on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, also, we're going to have a giveaway this show too. I know you guys, there was a guy that was like, when I wasn't here, they're like, bring, bring Doug back for the giveaways. Well, so that, here I am guys. I'm here. Cause I'm, a, I'm the Santa of this operation. That is, that is true. Cause like we didn't even talk about a giveaway. And the first comment was Doug leaves. I give the people what and they want. where is the giveaway? Exactly. Exactly. I think I think Cody handled it. He went through and got something to give away. But my bad, my bad, my bad, my fault. Actually, I take full responsibility for yeah, that. You got it. You know, you, I'm the Santa of this operation. So I make it rain. I make it rain and freebies. So stay tuned for that. We're going to announce that at the end of the show of what we're going to be doing. So you got to pay attention. Pay attention to the show, and uh, you'll have your chance at uh, a giveaway. But let's talk national, Dan. And uh, what was one thing that you saw at the national that you did not expect? 
the amount of people, actually the amount of people on preview day, Wednesday, they open from four to eight. It was like a stampede to the PSA line. Mm-hmm. You get hurt. Yeah. You get hurt if you're sitting looking. You're, you're setting up your booth, not paying attention. Bam, knock you right over. I got to get the PSA. Nike to the head, uh, yeah. Four to eight Wednesday felt like the peak time on Saturday in mm-hmm. previous years. Yeah. Uh, actually, I don't even know. I mean, I know there was like 40-something thousand people coming through the doors something on like Saturday. But Wednesday preview really stands out. Yeah, it does. It was uh, it was a, a healthy amount of people, and you know, shout out to you guys that came by the booth and uh, said hi. You know, it was that was the whole reason we went really, and uh, especially the amount of people that said, "Hey, thanks for doing the hype." So I mean that that we actually had more people that knew us, and I'm not laughing, but I kind of am because it is surprising. Uh, but it also makes me feel good inside at the same time. There was more people that knew about the hype that said, "Hey, I've been in a break." So, you know, maybe we got to change our, uh, our advertising budget on the on the breaks. But it was great for people to uh, to have people come up and say that to us. And for those of you guys that did listen to those hype episodes, so our booth was right next to PSA. So you guys that are listening to audio, you didn't you didn't see that, but we were right next to the PSA booth, which was nice because the lighting was good and uh, we didn't have a whole lot of traffic in that area. But every once in a while, you could probably hear that real high pitch sound. And uh, I think somebody told Cody that they felt like it was like a dog whistle in the background. Um, that was PSA uh, slabbing cards. So uh, I don't know if it was the cutting of the slabs or it was like the stamping of the slabs. Uh, but I was actually thinking about doing a money counter because I think the cheapest, and I, I could be wrong, but the cheapest uh, thing to grade there was $300. So you could just like every five seconds, it was just like another $300. Was it, was it not Was it not 250 It was, that's a... Maybe it was 250 but I felt uh, like it was, I felt, I felt like mine was 300 And then we, we did that... Um, LeBron, it was like a thousand, but uh, yeah, that's what that was. What LeBron? Um, I think we pulled a LeBron. Oh, I think it was uh, it was pretty. Just another day at the good. office, huh? Just another day Just at the another office. day at the office. Uh, you know what's and we've talked about it. We talked about it with Ken Golden and all that stuff. That uh, and check out those those shows on Mojo Break Media and audio versions. Uh, Mojo Sessions. We did uh, a phenomenal amount of shows. We got the Mike Fruitman one coming up later in the show, but we did. We had Ken Golden. We had Doug Plagans on from the uh, the play by play announcer for the Florida Panthers. That was phenomenal. We had Adam Martin from uh, Dave and Adam Card World. That was a great conversation. I think those early ones, the Doug and the Adam Martin, and I think the uh, Ryan from RBI crew, I had my voice. So I was listening to him back. It sounded great. Chris uh, Keller was a good one. Chris Keller. John, from Top John, Shelf. John Newman was a good one. Yeah. Um, actually, you know, I felt all of our interviews were actually pretty good. Yeah. I, I think they I, turned out pretty well. They, there was really very few dead air. I think uh, Tracy Hackler, Joe Staley, uh, they had. An ama- amazing chemistry Romance together. Might have started, I don't know. They might amazing have, they might chemistry. Um, so good. They, they might be listening to who's uh, the B Be- Bebop. And uh, you, if you actually were watching it, you probably don't see me, but I was there. I was put in the corner for that one. Yeah, you were producing. I, I was. Uh, producer I was Dan. super producer Dan. Uh, I wasn't doing a lot of producing. I'm um, actually all I did was uh, make sure the computer was recording yeah. and made sure your microphones were on. So. Right. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, if not, we might have scrapped the whole show. So. That was it. But, uh, yeah, every once in a while you'll hear me talk, and hmm, it was fun. Yeah. Actually, I like being in the corner. Yeah, and there, and definitely uh, yeah, uh, what I was going to say was um, Ken Golden brought it up a lot uh, in our interview, and we, we brought it up in a lot of our other podcasts about the uh, age demographic that were there. Um, you know, when you start seeing guys that, you know, are prepared for the flood where, the you know, the ankles are showing. and, and Forbidden. You know, the forbidden ankles are showing. You can kind of tell the uh, the style of, of the younger y- the younger gentleman, and there was a lot of that going on. And, I, and I very, we're very proud of that for this industry to uh, start going the other way in age. I, I think it actually, I think just the ankles is old school now. I'm seeing a little bit of calf. Oh, it's going up. It's going up. It's going up. It's going up. They're going to be. Uh, what were those pants that like capri pants? Hmm? We're, yeah. om- we're almost there. We're we're, uh, we're we're probably about eight months to a year away. Yeah, from from Capri's karate pants too. Yeah, those are yep. those are coming back. But, but uh, yeah, I mean, but you're saying like we were talking about it. Um, the for the last 
10 years, ever since we've been doing it, it was always like, how do we get the younger demographic involved? How do we get the kids involved? What do we got to do? Like, the kids are not interested. They want to play video games. This national, we show up, and the early 20s demographic probably outnumbered our demographic of late 30s mm-hmm. yeah, uh, for the first time in a decade. So uh, without even trying, I think the industry got a lot younger. And yeah. that that's good. Yeah, I mean, you got you guys like Aoki and, and all these artists and the uh, all the stuff in the, in the retail stuff popping and, and Logan Paul. I mean, there was a lot of things that contributed to that. And, and you know, just the, those guys being at home for a year, they were able to, uh, to discover their passion. And you know what? I think it also creates... It makes some of these guys feel like they're entrepreneurs, right? They're they're, they're like, it's a low buy-in to become an entrepreneur in the card industry. You know what I mean? You don't need to have somebody make something for you. You can buy a box and start your card empire, so to speak, with a few cards, and then you can show up to the national and flip those cards and buy more cards, and you've got this whole business going on. You can name your and, name, uh, you can name your you name your uh, company Mojo Break with an S. Yes, you could. Mm. Yeah, we got. Uh, <laughs> You know, sometimes people say flattery is or imitation is flattery, but there was two companies that just popped up just using Mojo Break, and they're they're going to be breaking cards right after the national. Right after the national, I, don't, I guess we did some good things over there, but never heard um, of you. I, I'm going to blame it on Joe Staley. Uh, maybe maybe them they saw them there and they're like, I I want a former football player to break cards with me, so I'm going to name my name similar to theirs. I'm not going to even be creative at all. I'm just going to copy their name, and uh, I'm going to go for it. So yeah, there's some couple couple uh, little I think little things I, going on. I, I think, and I'm not. I'm just jumping off here, Doug. Just jumping off. I I fear there may be some confusion. A little bit. I yeah. I, I have I have a fear that there yeah. may be some slight confusion if we're all named Mojo Break, and we're all doing the same exact thing. There may be a little bit of confusion. There might be some phone calls. There might be some people thinking there. Where's my card? Or you know. I'm, God, forbid, I'm in the, God forbid if the guy has like a similar name and a break and then he watches our break. And he I'm in the, the three box tops heritage hanger break. Cody, where where are they? Why are you breaking select basketball? That's what we're going to have to deal with. We're going to have to deal with that. Sorry, I'm not trying to throw Cody under the bus over here. <laughs> I'm just... I just want to put myself in his position. I think like, I'm going to name my next child Mojo Break if you guys are okay with that. It's, oh, every, it's just catching on. Everyone's oh, that's fine. Still, You're yeah, going to do that. Right. Shane's going to get a tattoo of Mojo Break. Um... Yeah. yeah, I think Doug was. I think we when we talked, we had that interview with Doug over the over the week, and and, and Doug was ranked seven hundred fifty five amongst baby boy names. I think Mojo's going to have it beat. I mean, it's just just it's trending. It's climbing up the ranks. So, uh, but you know, hey, we we take pride in our name, and uh, just don't take it. <laughs> just find another name. I mean, seriously, you know. I mean, I actually contact me. I've come up with some great names over the years. Um, yeah, I've sat there. There was actually some great names at the National uh, for break companies. I've sat there, done some really, really strong brainstorming with Rich Layton, and I'm pretty sure that uh, we'll gladly give you uh, a handful of names that we've come up with. Like, and, we were we were playing pool, or not pool, we were bowling, sorry, same, t- totally different thing. Slightly different, and different size ball. There was a company that was at the, uh, it was a Southern Hobby, they rented out uh, the King, shout out to Southern Hobby, it was a great party, it was probably the best one at the National. Um, there was a company called Best Card Breaks, so I just could only hope for silver. Sure, I mean? sure in hell, not the worst. You know, I could only help for they were the best ones. Best Card Breaks was their name, and I it's thought, not bad. That's not that's uh not it's not bad. And then there was another one, and I meant to go up and ask them. I saw them walking around the national, mm. and um, it was Backyard Breaks. And I, I thought I, I got one for you too. Backyard Breaks. I thought, what do you do when it snows or it rains? Is it is it just is it like canceled or um do they have an overhang i may have to tune in just to see because if it's only in the backyard i've got some questions you know i've got some questions on how commerce goes down all right so uh, the winner the winner and i don't know if they had a booth but they were definitely walking around sporting their their brand their swag uh barbell breaks Mm. and they had sun's out sun out guns out Showing off the muscles. I was, I was jealous. Yeah, pretty much like that. A little bit. The Python's a little bit bigger than yours, Doug. Sorry. Uh, but, yeah, out. barbell breaks. I mean, that's a good one, too. That's a good one. I'm afraid the guy might just crush my card. He's that's like, a good ah. one. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of really, really good names out there. I think there was one called um, 
you know, I'm going to try to make this as PG as possible, but it was. Uh, I think you're making it up now. It was retail breaks, and they said F the hobby boxes. That's that was oh, the slogan. That was actually that was on the sweatshirt. Well, they they went out and actually had merch made. They had merch made, and it said retail boxes, breaks, F hobby boxes. And then I think there was one called sleeving sports cards. Yeah, I mean now now we're just now we're really going for it. I think I think those I think they were they were like our neighbors. Free press. I think they were at our, they were they were our neighbors, sleeving right? Sleeving sports cards. I just and they I'm and glad. they were. They I want to know young. where they got their sleeves. So I'm running short. They were young, they were young, and I think they were on. Quote. I don't know if what not what not app. Is that did I just give them free press? You did. I did. Don't know what it is. I, I mean, I think we actually talked to him. We did. I think. Well, you did. I'm strongly considering it, maybe. Cool. In some, some regard. Um, you're start with another brand name, right? Uh, Doug's nutsack breaks. Yeah. Oh, oh that you can't take that one. That one's that's already us rich. That, that one's yeah. But no, that that's me and Rich. Sorry. Do you? I mean, do you want to be part of it? I thought we were doing a three way. on No, that. we're not doing a three way. That was that was a Rich Layton, myself. And I think uh, I think David from uh, our favorite distributor was involved in that as well. Oh, yeah, that's messed up. I, Sorry, man. A piece of the company. Sorry, you didn't you Not didn't get it. Hair. That's um, worth that's a million dollar idea. No, I mean like I'm thinking of jumping on there. The nutsack breaks. I mean, I, do you think whatnot would like allow that? Nutsack on the whatnot. Well, gold. <laughs> it's literally gold. The and, thing uh, I love about this episode is that it might have is, the explicit is, or? is it is recorded so we can always take all the terrible stuff out <laughs> and the dead air and the dead air, <laughs> the dead air. absolutely not. happening. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was a slide there and, and I can't re- re- really read the sign, but there's a sign and I saw this at a booth. So I had to take. I had to take a picture of it, and it said um, something. Whoa! Whoa! Somebody's throwing okay. stuff around. Okay. Shows that good, huh? Those backyard breaks <laughs> coming to talk. Might take us good. outside. Um, motivated seller, but not desperate or stupid. In parentheses, I thought that was kind of cool. And a sign made. Motivated seller. That's cool. And that was another thing I wanted to bring up is, uh, and I know you know maybe these things sold themselves this year, but me, I'm a salesman. And uh, there really wasn't a lot of guys that were like uh, out there trying to sell. Uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, Mealy Pops. I didn't buy anything, but I went over there and introduced myself. I was actually trying to sell some of my Otanis. And he was like, hey, can I interest you in a 1213 prism case? And I'm like, maybe, maybe you can. And I was like, what's the price? And it was, it was a lot of money. But if you have that, like, hey, can I introduce you? Can I interest you in a flawless? And, and he was literally the only guy asking for the sale. There was not a lot of people out there asking for the sale. And that's sale 101. If you don't ask for the sale, most of the time you don't get the sale. And I know we're living in, a, in an age right now where, you know, these Zions, these Jaws, these LeBron, whatever you're pulling, they're selling themselves. But the guys that are asking for the sale, that's why I can see why Mealy Pops is successful because he's asking for the sale. And that's what he did. He asked well, for the sale. He, he, also, if you have to ask how much, you can't afford it. Ah oh, well, I mean these things change every day, but it was an original twelve thirteen prism case. Kate, yeah, you, of yeah, uh, you, basketball, hundred thousand. It was something like that. I mean one fifty. One fifty. Just uh, add another fifty k to it. If I mean, if the uh, the, the LeBron, the um, the, 10, the amount of money. Getting back to the national, the amount of money that was being thrown around, and I mean straight cash, homie. Yes. Was insane. Yes. Nothing like I've ever seen at any national. No. Uh. I mean, probably a hundred. I, I was talking about it before, before we even went. We were ha- speculating, like, how much commerce do you think is going to happen at the national? And I was like, I don't know, about five million. There was like five million dollars going down, like every like fifteen minutes. Yeah, I I was not even in the ballpark. Yeah, that might have been one deal, just one deal. There was dollars. there was multiple. Six figure cash transactions a day. Yeah. Um, there was a booth that I saw on Twitter that was sold out on Wednesday. Jeez. Somebody just came up and said, Bought Here's cash. I'm taking everything. You Bought could just go booth. home now. Wow. Uh but I yeah, it was it was nuts, man. It was nuts. Um uh, crazy. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I 
Atlantic City is almost going to be a letdown. I'm sorry, but what? I just I think I think that I'm not hating on maybe Atlantic. the maybe the 2020 uh, 2023 national. In Chicago. I'm not hating on AC, but it it's a letdown no matter what. Yeah, I mean I'm not I'm just saying like it. Atlantic City has never been Chicago. Yeah. Atlantic City will never be Chicago. Chicago is just like kind of the, it's the mecca of card collecting. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we do have a video of us looking for Sean Mannion cards coming out very soon um, as well. So stay tuned for that. We've got so much footage that uh, it's going to take us a while to to get up. So. I got I got an award. I got a self self given award um, from the national. I uh, I am the best buyer. Uh, of the national because uh, you overpaid because I overpaid. Uh, I you have a card for seventy five dollars, give you a hundred. You have three cards for ten, I give you twenty. I'll give anybody um, any ideas. No, I mean, and every time I did that, you were there. You were there. You saw the smile on the dealer's face. Yeah, they were very happy. They were just like, "Look at this guy. If I can just get a couple more guys like this, no haggling, not so take- that sign applied to you where it said stupid." Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, stupid, but I was I was providing joy. Motivated buyer, desperate <laughs> and stupid. <laughs> no, but I was providing joy and happiness and money yeah. for people. Yeah, you did. Yeah, there, so, was this, there was somebody asking seventy five dollars. You'll see the video. Dan gave him a hundred. You'll see the video. It's coming out. Um, but as you know, we got and you guys got to check out the video. It's also in our trailer that we put up here on the uh, channel on the Motor Break Media channel that uh, we actually bought a twenty five thousand dollar box of uh, Chrome uh, Topps Chrome O three O four. Broke it. We broke it with Joe Staley. Um, I won't say anymore. You got to go watch the video. I mean, it was it was it was crazy. So it was a dud uh, box, actually. To be yeah, honest it was with pretty you. bad. It was pretty bad. We also broke some two thousand seventeen Prism as well. Uh, which you can see uh, some of the highlights here. Uh, you'll see that. And those videos will be posted soon on Mojo Break Media. Uh, but all in all, man, I think it was a great show. I mean, for us, being able to see you guys, um, you know, there was there was a few moments where, like, because, you know, we've been locked inside for the most part, at least in our area here. And um, just getting getting all the kindness from you guys that listen to the show uh, was just very heartwarming. Um, there was a couple times I almost seared up just because, you know, becoming emotional as I get a little older, but just seeing you guys say some nice things to me about like something I have fun doing, um, was absolutely phenomenal. So, uh, Dan, anything else to add to the, uh, national recap? I think it kind of stole what I was going to say, but yeah, it was just great to, uh, to see the, uh, the kind words, um, not only from listeners, but also other, podcast and content content creators uh coming up and having a mutual respect for what they do and what we do and uh yeah i mean i could and and seeing people i haven't seen for you know two years like uh seeing ivan and and rob from uh go gts live and uh seeing keller and rich layton and uh a lot of people that i actually was there that I didn't get to sit down and, and talk to that I've known for a decade. Uh, so it was, uh, it was fun, man. It was fun. Uh, well, one thing too, that I, I, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned um, his name because there was somebody that came up to us and they did say, and so it's goals. So maybe Atlantic city, the things will be different. Um, somebody said, I was really hoping you guys would be as big as late sports cards. So uh, definitely a goal for us to get there. Cause I mean, we're like, we're like small on the scale. Of, small potatoes. Of Rich Layton. So small potatoes. I think next year, maybe that tune will change. Or maybe we'll just grow farther apart. Maybe you've got to go one you either gotta go one way or the other. I'll right? be honest so. with you, man. It is gonna be the J- Jeff Bezos. It's uh, it's uh, big shoes to fill. Um, the, or it, maybe I could physically be bigger than Rich Layton, which I probably already am. But maybe I'll just gain 500 pounds. I'll be bigger than Rich Layton. It very difficult uh, to get to Jeff Bezos status, and I, I know uh, I know I keep on saying that's an inside joke. He'll probably get it. Yeah. Uh, but way to go, Jeff. So are we the uh, DeLorean of the industry then? If he's a Jeff Bezos, who is a Jeff Bezos? I don't know. You don't I'm even know saying. who I'm talking about. I don't. Okay. okay. So. Uh, but anyways, well, back to cards. We've got gold standard football just came out, and uh, young Greg busted some. 
this morning we pulled the one of one Trey Lance tag auto. Um, I, I really want that card. I, I need to get the shield in my PC because Jimmy G who, I mean, you know what I mean? But uh, gold standard five hits a box. It's one of the better values. It's one of the first uh, auto patches with NFL uniforms of these rookies. A lot to chase, a lot of vets, lots of legends. So fun break. We're doing half cases, um, you know, at a pretty good price. So check out mojobreak.com for that for uh, your breaks of gold standard. And without further ado, we've got Mike Fruitman from Mike's Stadium. He's about to rock the mic, and we're going to have some great stories. And stay tuned afterwards to find out how you could win something. What is up, everybody? We're live from the 41st National in Chicago, and this has been a meeting that we've been trying to get going for like three years. We got a dear friend, Mike Fruitman from Mike Stadium Club in the house. What's going down, Mike? Things are good. It's uh, national number two for me. So this is, you know, I've, I've got one under the belt. Fortunately, it was the same building. So it's like, okay, I know where to pee. I know where to get drinks. And <laughs> right. And, I know where my friends are. So it was much better. And you kind of, you know, unfortunately, I hate to rip on things because everything's going so well, but the food here needs a little bit of step up a notch. Uh, I just came back from Portillo's. I know. I will I tell you, it was incredible. Yeah. And it lived up to advanced billing. Yeah, it was just, uh, burgers, right? Or burgers and, and, and hot dogs, right? Hot dogs, and they also have the the uh, Italian beef sandwiches, the dip That's sandwiches. That's right. That's what I needed to get. So I missed your text because I was freaking talking everybody's ear off over here doing the show, and I could have gotten some Portillo's. I missed out. Sorry. Ne I'll next vicariously year. live near you. <laughs> So let's talk about, you've been around, uh, I remember when we talked off air, that you got started in, I believe it was the Shack year, right? Yes, I started up in 92. I was working at the card shop, and it was one of those things. It's like Victor Kayyem and the Patriots. It's, it was, you know, it, he, he liked uh, the shaving company so much that he that he bought it. And uh, literally, the, the owner came to me in December and said, look, quit buying cards. I'm like, what are you talking about? Things are great. He said, no, we don't have enough money for cards. One day, I bought a Griffey 89 upper deck, <clears throat> sold it the same day, I had this great sense of accomplishment. He's like, I told you not to buy cards. I'm like, what is <laughs> going? I made you 50 bucks. Right. And uh, he's like, all right, look, I got to sell it. I got to close it. And uh, one of those ways doesn't work well for you. So, Right, right. Now, you know, fast forward, go back to modern day here. What percentage of your collectors are your, you know, old, the guys that have been coming around for years compared to, like, the guys that started last week? What, do you, what would you say the percentages are? You know, fortunately, at, at the shop, we've developed a very long customer collector base. Sorry. Yeah. I hate, sorry, I said customer. I, 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 sorry, I got to – okay. I, so I won't do it again. We, we have a great collector base. And, you know, I, I can tell how long somebody's been with me by which location they've started at because we've had – We've moved four times, five locations, and so I'm like, oh, okay, so you, you're there, oh, you've been a 15-year-old guy. And, um, you know, obviously in the last year, we've developed a real strong new new base, but what we've also seen is a lot of laps collectors coming back. Nice, I mean, it's crazy to see the young guys around here, you know what I mean? It's like, and it's a good thing, because I think it was like, and I've, I've talked about this on prior podcasts, so people that are like loyal, they're like, you're gonna talk about this again, but it's, it's crazy because like we were the youngest guys five six years ago and we're like what's the future going to be you know of like when i 20 years from now are there going to be people buying cards still because you know the, the younger guys don't seem to be interested in it and and now it's a complete opposite you know you've got the sneaker guys you've got the what you you call them you said collector there is flippers unfortunately you know not the dolphin and uh these guys are i think they're here to stay and you know when they get you know, into their 40s and maybe get a little bit more money, you know, they're going to remember that Zion. Whoever's the hot guy that's a legend, that's retired, they're going to have money to come to the 61st National and, uh, you know, keep this thing going. So um, it's, it's, it's awesome to see. And uh, how surreal is it, man? It's, uh, you know, you bring up the younger collectors, and, and it used to be a younger collector to come in my store, and I'd want to make sure that they had a great experience. And part of that means, you know, trading them straight across, you're single for mine. And now it's like, you know, I, I walk up, and, and they're already like, they've got three cards in the case, they've got a $100 card, they want $120 in singles, because theirs is more active. I'm like, wait a second, guys, hey, let, let's be a little bit fair here. Right, right, right. And it is funny, people just think that you would give them the money for the last comp. I mean, let alone there's eBay fees involved, right? So I'm giving you cash. I'm going to give you cash for your card, so let's take off the 20% eBay fees. And then it, there's like, that's what they want. Well, and you know what? I, I like the I, I, like, I like the kids, but, and I've got an 18-year-old son who's into the hobby, and I like the fact that he's learning negotiating skills. And, and not just like, look, it's this, I'll give you this, but also how do we inter interchange with people? How do, how do we exchange and converse where right. it's not, look, you know, here's my offer, take it or leave it. And, and, and really, I mean, that's part of the engagement you have with a collector. It's not just, look, you know, in, out, next. I want to have that repeat experience. Right, absolutely. And um, what would you say that you do as far as your card shop that's unique to you know only your card shop? 
Um, I treat people like they're family. Right. And it's not, I'm sorry, that's not unique. And most card shops are doing that or at least should be doing that. Um, I, I give people the full experience. And sometimes, look, I, I grew up on my grandmother's sense of humor, which you don't fully know. <laughs> and I also grew up on the movie Airplane. So my flippant, I'm <laughs> nice. snarky. And, you know, if you wear Notre Dame and Nebraska stuff in my store, you're probably not going to have the best experience unless you have a great sense of humor. But, you know, but once you're in on the jokes, it's great. Um, and, 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 you know, I'm, I'm fun on the phone. Literally, I answer the phone on speakerphone so that everyone... So when I do this, everybody goes, why? Because, you know, the, the whole, how, how much you have this? Will you beat blowout? Will you do this? And, and, and the whole, how much do you pay for things? And, and which, which are valuable questions. But, yeah, it's like I, I make sure that people are part of the experience of the right. shop. Yeah, and that's amazing. And I mean, sometimes even for me, I don't want to even call them customers. I want to call them friends. Right. You know what I mean? Because it feels like sometimes it's too businessy, right? You know, it's like I don't want to call you a client or a customer. It's, you know, you build these friendships. And that's where, you know, you've been doing, obviously, I had a shop a lot longer. We did. We we were talking to people through cameras where we they were seeing our face, but we were just seeing their username and their text. Right. Where you don't get emotion. You don't get any dry, you know, if they're making a joke, you don't know if they're being serious or not. So um, the, it, I loved, once we opened the shop, to be able to talk to people face-to-face -face about their experiences. And it seems like things actually go better that way, face-to-face -face rather than uh, either through email or through the chat room, you know, so. I, I agree. It's one of the luxuries we have as a shop owner, and now you do as well, where it, 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 it's a very personal experience. And, and yes, when you're breaking for someone, you're doing a personal break, you're doing a, a, yep. a box, a case break. Yes, everybody's involved with it, and you're looking at their comment stream down the side. But, but it, it is so much more distant. We love when collectors, when we do, we do breaks, about 90% of our stuff is picked up in the shop. So we get to have that experience, hey, congratulations, or I'm sorry, I get to try to rectify it a little bit, right. where it's done face to face. And, and you know, I'm not just a face behind a screen or on a screen, I'm, I'm, I'm their LCS. And that's what's amazing too, is like, hey, you can get into this break and then you're getting them to come back in the shop, right? So um, that's the definitely the benefit of having a shop and doing breaks is that, hey, come pick up your cards tomorrow, and why don't you just pick up a hoops box while you're here? You know, exactly. Uh, just you already participated in the break. You want to break some more. So that's that's the amazing thing about doing you know both ways of, uh, of commerce these days, right? So now, if you guys don't know, the shop's in Aurora. Uh, we visited it. We went down to Denver for the All Star Game and the All Cards Weekend, which Mike uh, threw on, which you heard Dan talk about on the last show. Uh, how phenomenal the show was. The area is phenomenal if you've never been there. I, I, I almost want to get like a vacation home over there or something because I'm, I'm falling in love. I actually watched a video on uh, YouTube of a house in Vail. And, you know, obviously I'm never going to be a, a Exxon CEO who's selling it. Uh, but this house was just absolutely gorgeous. Every, uh, every room had a view of the mountain. And, I mean, it's just, it would be nice to have a, a, a secondary place to live. And I, I love your area. It's beautiful. So I'm, 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 as you know, I'm, I'm in just outside of Denver, right by the airport. And yes, I go to Vail, and I, I imagine what it'd be like to live in those houses. Yeah. I'll, I'll ski, and that's about as close as I'm getting. Yeah, I don't ski. I do snowboarding. Um, never tried skiing, and I actually haven't snowboarded in like 20 years. So I don't know. You know, I can't break these hands. So right. you know, what I mean, um, maybe a leg or two, but the hands need to stay because I need to use the hands. So. Yeah, just don't tear an ACL right. or ACLs. Yes. Right. Yeah. I uh, actually was running out on the football field last night. I was racing Joe, and uh, I was like, man, I hope I don't pull a hamstring. And that's, that's what happens as you get older, right? You pull hamstrings. You're like, you're not like you used to be. You're not be able to run like you did in your 20s, right? So. But the hands, that's that's uh, That's critical. the most important thing. So if I fall, I'm like trying to fall onto my leg or my elbow or something because the hands just, I need them, right? So the most valuable part. Maybe I should get insurance, like J-Lo's butt. I can get insurance on my hands. Millions. 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 You know, just if it happens, then you know, I can cash out. So, uh, <laughs> so um, what, I mean, going through the, uh, the, the, I know you've walked the floor a little bit. Absolutely. Was there um, any card at the National that is a must-have for you that you don't have yet? You know, there was a Wagner on the ground, on the field, excuse me, on the floor. And it was a, you know, it was a three. And, and just seeing it, it's, uh, it, my, my National experience happened at the last National. I was, I was on the floor. And uh, J Joe Davis from J&J &J Sports yeah, Cards. good guy. He saw me, and he, he had this, hey, you, I know you like music. Um, here you go, check this out. And it was a Woodstock ticket, and he didn't know 
that I was born August 15th, 1969. Oh, jeez. First day of Woodstock, and most of the, over, over speak here, guys, sorry. Uh, most of the Woodstock tickets were three-day tickets. He had a single ticket from the day I was born, not my birthday, day of. That's crazy. And uh, it was a PSA 10, and it was one of those moments where, like, money meant nothing to me. And I'm saluted. He's got 500 on him. like, so, Joe, 500? He's like, no, how about 200? Like, so, 300? And that was... I walked up front, I talked to John Brogy, and I said, look, this is, this is why I was here. And he showed it to me. He goes, oh, you wanted this? I said, no. I didn't know I wanted this. And then I saw it, and it reminded me, like, why does every collector come in my store? Because they want that experience. They want to find that card. Exactly. They want to find that piece of their childhood or, or, or the current day right. player who really excites them. And, and having that thing was like, I left there, and I, and I made a, I don't do this a lot, but I emoted to my collectors. I made, like, a five-minute video where I talked about it. and said, look, this is, this is really important to me to remind me why you guys do this. Right. And some for you, it's, it's buy a $2 Brady, sell it for five. Right. God bless you. That's awesome. But for the people, who, the heart of this industry is feelings, it's sentiments. Exactly. It's, and you're right, it's memories. It's almost like photos on your phone or whatever that you could go back and look at and, and, and remember that time. And, man, Woodstock, I, I think it was one of Santana's first shows, and he was on, on so many you know, mind altering uh, uh, things. Um, I wish I would, I mean, I heard 99 and 94 were absolute S shows, but I think there's a documentary Dan was just talking about. I think it was Woodstock 99. Um, on how just the whole thing, there was water was $4, they didn't have <laughs> porta potties, and um, you know, Limp Biscuit got blamed for uh, ensuing riots and stuff like that. And um, I'm actually, when I get home, I'm anxious to watch that documentary because there was so many bands that when I was in high school, like Limp Biscuit, Insane Clown Posse, sure. um, you know, uh, Corn, Rage, I mean, uh, that might be a ticket that I want to buy. So that was wasn't, uh, so that was you sod tossing a Green Day and lighting. That was ninety four, right? A ninety nine. That was ninety nine too. I, I believe. Okay. Yeah, I thought you know I thought that too when I was talking to somebody. They said no, that was ninety four. I was like I felt like that was ninety nine with Green Day. I believe. I will have to fact too. check off the air, but you know we talked about it with Keller when he was here, and and, and our listeners know we're big music guys. So, um, and I know you get to work, you know, at the at different concerts and things like that. What is your most memorable concert uh, in the area that you're in? So uh, I've been working concert security since 1988, and David Lee Roth and Steve Vai was the first show I ever wow. worked. And, and I, David Lee Roth was by himself? It was the Eat em and Smile Tour. It was right after he'd broken up from Van Halen. It was David okay. Lee Roth, Steve Vai. And uh, so this roadie walks up to me and goes, hey, keep an eye on this bathroom. And he walks in with this girl, and he goes, the bathroom's broken for about 20 minutes. So I'm like... And I had no idea what was going on. And, and finally, as I'm realizing I'm blocking the bathroom while somebody's getting their backstage pass, I realized that this is a really interesting industry. And I'm not <laughs> right. sure I'm really designed for this industry, right. but, but I'm going to ride it out. Right. And that was 30-odd uh, years ago. That's hilarious. Yeah, Dave, I just listened to David Lee Roth. I think he was on Rogan a couple months ago. And that, that guy is an interesting uh, individual. Even now, I can only imagine when he had a little bit more youth on his side, what he was like to be I, around. I would have liked to have been in, a, in an ambulance when he was an EMT. He was an EMT? He, 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 fact oh check God. this one. He was an EMT, and then you're like looking up like, are you David Lee Roth? Is this, is this what I'm seeing before I die? And maybe this isn't so bad. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> now, did you get a chance to do any Metallica shows out there? Uh, yeah, every time Metallica comes to town, something insane happens. We had them the night of the Obama election. Oh, jeez. We had them the night that McGuire broke the record. Oh, my God. And we had them a, a number of years ago, and they were at the football stadium, and while Ride the Lightning is playing, we're watching increasingly coming, approaching uh, lightning strikes. So we had to stop the show. You're like, is this part of the show, or is it like nature? <laughs> uh, you know, Metallica pulled in some favors. Mother Nature got in on the show, and yeah, we had a complete lightning strike. We had we had to clear the field, and everybody in the pit's like, "I'm not leaving." I'm like, "No, sir, you're leaving." We have to, there's, I'm not creating this. There's lightning strikes, and I walked up to this one guy. I said, "Look, you're gonna leave right now, or you're gonna lose your wristband." He's like, "What are you talking about?" I said, five, four, three, two, one. He's like, "What?" And I snipped off his wristband. I said, "Great." Does anybody else want to lose their wristband? And suddenly it became very real, and we were able to clear the field. Have you guys had like, and I, I, I don't know talking on a morbid level here but like you know like having to deal with people that are like oh, like maybe taking too much of some kind of substance that you have to kind of deal with we lost somebody at the uh, further fest which is everybody who was left from the grateful dead any number of years ago yeah. we lost somebody at that one i don't know exactly what they overtook but yeah and, and unfortunately it doesn't happen that often when uh, the pope came to town in 93 world youth day they're like hey just so you know in a city of 100,000 people we have this many be births this many deaths and i'm like you're telling me we're at an event where we expect 4.3 people to die? And like, oh, yeah, completely. We expect... I'm like, whoa, whoa. That's crazy. <laughs> I'm not sure I really want in on this. What kind of stat is that? That is insane. 
Yeah, I can't wait to go out to Red Rocks one of these days. Oh. I, I'm hearing all the story. I mean, you told the stories. I, I've talked to more people afterwards. And like, it was like one of the best concerts I've ever been to. And uh, I'll have to like look at the concert calendar and try to pan, uh, plan out something to go see something at Red Rocks. Going to see a show at Red Rocks is like any holiday in Vegas. It's just automatically better. Except for like Easter, I don't think Easter is better in Vegas. Yeah. But like, like Halloween in Vegas is obscene. Yeah. But and, and that's what every concert is. You know, you, you know from every band, you're getting their best show. Right. It's their it's their YouTube moment. That's insane. Yeah, I know they do like they, they used to do some rock festivals there where they'd have multiple bands and stuff like that. I'm sure that's going to be coming back now that we're all, you know, hopefully staying and coming back. But uh, you know, with what's going on in the world, you know, maybe we won't get as many concerts. I know they're all getting them in right now. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely excited to go to a concert at that Red Rocks. Now, do you have like signed tickets and memorabilia in your personal collection or in your store from bands that you've seen or anything like that? So not so much bands. Uh, actually, you know what? I, I do have one. And if we went to the house, well, next time when you come over to the house, yeah, um, I met Stevie Ray Vaughan, and nice. I got him to sign one. And we had our nanosecond. I said, just Stevie, um, Mr. Ray Vaughan, Mr. Yeah. Vaughan, whatever. I said. Said, hey, look, a lot of people coming back from from alcohol rehab wouldn't profess it. They would look like it would happen. It would be like a quiet thing. You were very vocal about it, and hopefully, other people can find encouragement from you affecting your life. Right. And uh, he wrote, you know, to Mike, thanks, pal, and God bless. And I'm like, whoa. And, and then now to have that on the wall, like I shouldn't. It should be like shellacked. It should be underneath the safe. Did you get it PSA or? I haven't. It's, it's, it's so old. It's uh, Remember the boxes when they had banned the box when CDs used to come in like a yeah. giant oversized box? Yes. So you wouldn't shoplift them? Where, oh, yeah. It was like, yeah, exactly. It had like just like maybe a bunch of space and then the CD was bought. Yeah. It was, it was like, like, like right a, when they first came out. It right? was, yes. Yeah. Yes. Because I'm old. It, it's kind of like. I remember that. that. I was buying. I remember buying CDs. I, uh, I, I think at Guns N' Roses, Use Your Illusion. Yep. Um, I remember getting it that way. Because uh, I, 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 Terminator 2, you know, they had the, you could be you buying. Mind, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I was like, I tell my mom, like, I got to get that out. I remember it was in that big old thing. I remember buying her, her buying Garth Brooks at Costco. It was the same way. The Garth Brooks CD. So, um, But the reason I asked you is because we actually had the, uh, we were fortunate enough to have a customer that uh, was related to Tom Petty. Oh, no and, and Tom Petty came into town to play with, he was playing with Mud Crutch, uh, which was his first band. So we got to go to backstage. I, I might have told you this story already, but we got to go backstage at the Fillmore, watch him play, and then we hung out uh, with him at, at his hotel and watched the Warriors um, Cavalier series, which Warrior fans, and then the Ca that was the game seven where the Cavaliers won. So I was like, I don't even care that my team lost and hanging out with Tom Petty. So we had him sign, um, Dan, Dan's in the music industry, we had him sign up a pick guard that Dan brought. Mm -hmm. He drew a whole like little thing of uh, a character smoking and then Tom Petty and blah, 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 the best of wishes, you know, stuff like that. Sent it in a PSA and they said it was fake. <laughs> so I was like, we were there. Um, and, and you know, I, I know it's they, they try to be, you know, it's, it's a judgment thing, but I'm like, did I need to send him that? Because I took a picture. I didn't have to take a picture of him signing. Right, I think right. that'd be weird, right? Um, and we weren't gonna sell it. We just wanted it to be, you know, with the item. You know, it's me. We're never gonna sell it, but we just wanted it to be a PSA. Also, we wanted to have the experience that we could talk about on the podcast. So, sure. Um, I felt like bringing it over here and be like, "Here's the picture, of Tom Petty. Here's the backstage footage. Can we at least put that sticker on there for me?" You yeah, know? legit. So, so, and that's gotta be a tough job because maybe he signs slightly different. And the only auto they have to compare to is like from 1989, and it's completely yeah. different. One of the other things is, you know, a lot of other people get a rush job signature. They don't right. have to take the time autograph. And right. they're like, wait a second, no, the, 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 the T looks completely different because he really cared. Well, I, I thought that was like, he drew a picture and it was on a guitar pick, and it's like, why, why would any, why would anybody forge something like? If I, if I was gonna, like, if I was gonna forge Tom Petty, probably get a white card, and right. you know what I mean, like a postcard or something like that. It was like, there's so many different elements in there that I was surprised that the the greater, you know, just and they took our money. It was like 200 bucks, and you know, you, you get nothing back. It's right. like the whole like, nah, I should have took that money and put it on the roulette wheel. You know, it was right. the same same odds. You know, so, um, but you know, we're big into the music music stuff and. It's uh, always interesting to hear stories like the Woodstock ticket and stuff like that. And um, I'm sure there's a bunch of tickets out there. There are. There is one table out there. It's all. Uh, it, it looked like it was mostly uh, mostly athletic tickets, but yeah, I'm sure there were some other event tickets as well. Yeah, it's getting loud in here. I think they're cheering for us and uh, our <laughs> stories. But uh, uh, so, what's been hot in the shop recently? I know we're in the end of, end of July and we've had some new releases. What's been the uh, the hottest uh, sports card product in the shop? So, one of the things that I'm really aware of is our football sales this year. You know, going into this year with Trevor Lawrence and the other quarterbacks and other position players, it seems like a really strong year. And what, while we've seen some appreciation, we're not seeing monster appreciation with boxes, right. which is great. 
Um, you know, it's tough to restock still right now. I think distributors are aware. I think everybody's kind of waiting for those first footage to come out of training camps. Right. You know, where he's throwing bombs and everything's getting caught and touchdowns. Um, I think football right now is definitely, it, it's a quiet one because it's still baseball season. We're just coming off the end of basketball. Right. But I think football right now, if you had to quit, even though baseball's doing great, I'd say quick answer, I think football. And uh, I think, you know, it, it's, it's tough because I want to hold back product. I want to have things on my shelf. I want to keep it for a while. Right. But in the same regard, I, I can't say no to something. If somebody says, you've got, do you have more elite? I'm going to crack that case. Right. You have to. I mean, that's the whole thing. I mean, like, we, we talk about how many uh, 12, 13 prism cases we had. I think we had, like, 40 or 50 where we were making $20 a box, uh, 13, 14 prism. I couldn't even give it away. I was giving it as free packs, and people like were complaining about that. Um, so it's, it's it's a tough thing. And I've I've seen breakers go the route of just selling to the highest bidder on DealerNet. Um, for those of you who don't know, it's like a, a network of dealers that sell to each other. Instead of breaking, they just sell it. But at the end of the day, if we're not getting the cards in the customer's hands, what's that benefiting, right? So if I'm not doing any of the hot products on my breaks. I'm just doing the stuff that I have a lot of, then those customers are not going to come back and they may not even be in the hobby anymore. You know, so it's important. And I know a lot of dealers stress over the fact that they lost money or it went up tenfold in a month or whatever. But, you know, if you got it in your customer's hand, then somebody benefited from that. I agree. And, and one of the things that you have to have in this business is you've got to be able to not look back. Right. It's so tough. I mean, it how is. many cases? I'm a little bit older, so how many cases of 2000 product that I have oh, for football? God, how many yeah. 0304s? And, you know, if I had just broken my leg during the 0304 basketball <laughs> season, I had yep. to shut down for, uh, that's a long break, but six months, eight months, it would have been so much better. Uh, same thing with the 17 season, right, at this point. Um, I just actually just opened a $10,000 box of Prism today with Joe. Um, that I think we were selling for like what three two three hundred dollars when it came out. Oh, yeah. And uh, back then in 2017, everybody was chasing Kareem Hunt out of all people because Watson got hurt, Mahomes wasn't playing, Trubisky wasn't playing well, and Kareem Hunt was getting like 200 yard games. So everybody was chasing Kareem Hunt. We couldn't even fill out. I remember it was tough to fill contenders. Like nobody wanted to buy contenders. It was tough to fill uh, the national treasures at that time. And it's like. Yes, break break leg moment or a year long vacation would have been great. When NT hit in 2017, I, I, my, my distributors like me not as much as they like you. <laughs> uh, we had 17 cases of NT football, and I'm thinking to myself, how the freak are we going to get rid of this? There's no way we're going to be able to move through all this. And, and we were, you know, we were pushing it to 2K a case. And uh, wow, can we can we get in the DeLorean go 88 miles oh an hour? God. Lightning strike. It's so crazy. I mean, it, 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 same thing with soccer. I was just talking to Cyrus, who's a big soccer player, oh, yeah. and we didn't break soccer, and then four, uh, 14 came around, and we had some success with the World Cup, mm -hmm. um, and then flawless soccer was announced. And I remember at the summit, they're like, fall soccer's coming. I'm like, ooh, you know, Messi on card, right? So we had to buy, I think it was 40 Donruss, 2015 Donruss soccer cases to get 20 flawless cases, and we did it, and it almost broke us. I mean, we were like dwindling in the bank account because we, 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 we sold the first few and then it right. just seemed like we lost people lost interest because it was soccer. It wasn't baseball. It wasn't sure. football. And it's like, I, I talked to Cyrus. So we, I think we paid 2400 for the um, flawless cases at the time. They're 50000 now. Oh. Um, and I think the Donruss that was forty boxes, $40 a box is like 700 or something crazy like that now. So it's just like, we, I think we even opened the last two flawless in hopes of selling the singles. And we did. And they would have been more than more that. It's like, Man, only like, and like you say, you can't look back, but it's fun to chat about. It's fun to laugh about, of like, if you can only get back and get Michael J. Fox kicking that DeLorean, man. I saw Cyrus getting out of the elevator this morning at the hotel we were at, and he was walking across, and, and we talked for a nanosecond, and I'm thinking, here's a guy who basically had exclusives on a sport. Oh, I know. He owned soccer, he and, and, and still does to a major extent. Yes. But everybody else wants to dance in his playground, so here's a guy who's used to getting boxes that don't, don't appreciate quickly, that nobody cares about where you're like, oh my God, I'm sure he's many of us like, yeah, I'll take your soccer, but you'll give me something good, right, also. Yeah, I hope, I mean, I don't know his allocation. He seems like he's having fun still. So, I mean, I'm sure he's doing pretty well, but yeah, he him and I think it was uh, G1 were like the only uh, George, I think it's George V, uh, the only two guys that was really kind of holding the candle doing every soccer release. Wow. Know? So, and I, now it's like one of the products I like to rip. I used to like, you know, like the World Cup, but I never rip like Champions League or anything like that. I actually really enjoy opening soccer now. And, you know, thinking back about a year and a half ago when we were at the Tops Conference and they had just laid out the plan where it's like, look, if you want to be direct and you want to buy all this baseball, well, you know you want, you're going to have to buy WWE, you're going to have to buy Star Wars, Bundesliga. you're going to have to buy 
Bundesliga, and, and we were all literally like, and, and you know, tops, please forgive me. We, we were less than fully enamored with this opportunity. Right. And, you know, here it is a year later, and those order forms, those emails come out, we're like, hey, it's available. And, and I'm, you know, so, honey, stop. I'm, I'm going to finish my steak in a bit. Hold on, and, and, you know, get that order in before you forget about it. Right, right. It's, it's incredible. That's incredible. I mean, we talked about it with, um, uh, with NASCAR, the NASCAR radio guys, uh, that's like the last category that I, I don't understand why NASCAR is not playing. You know, like what is it going to take for NASCAR? Because you got soccer, you got UFC, everything blowing up, but NASCAR still remains the same. Yeah, Chronicles came out this year and the big boys were at 119 a box. And I was like, oh my God, that's actually really cool because yeah. I didn't want that product to get inflated. It makes it harder for me to roll it. It makes it tougher for my collectors to swallow that pill. And I felt nice. Although I got other collectors like, wait a second, so NASCAR is 119. Why isn't everything 119? Right. I'm like, oh, well, there's a few other dynamics to it. Right, right. And, and, and the, the NASCAR guys actually like, like, like where they're at. You know, the NASCAR collectors don't want it to get hot, but it's just surprising to me because you could do so many things with the memorabilia. I mean, more than anything, right? You could do the car, the sheet metal, all that stuff. Sure. And it's phenomenal that it hasn't really taken off. And you got the legend, you got the history of Richard Petty and Dale, Earn Dale Earnhardt Sr. and, you know, Jeff Gordon. And it's like, it feels like it very similar, like the legends of basketball and then the Haley Deegans that are upcoming, you know? So here's uh, one. maybe someday it'll, it'll happen. Here's one for you. The first relic card ever made, and, and fact checkers get me on this one. The first fa uh, relic card ever made was race, uh, I believe it was race tire or, or race uh, outfit. Wow. But literally, if, I, if, if I'm wrong. Press pass. Call me out, yep. I think they literally were the first one to get done. Wow. Yeah, I remember the press pass. I think it was five star. It was one of my favorite products. We couldn't move it, but you know, every once in a while, somebody would buy a box for four hundred dollars, and it'd be like some of the prettiest looking cards they ever made. Um, and I believe didn't DJ used to be the head of racing at Press Pass, right? DJ yeah, from Panini. Absolutely, he was there, and also Fleer, and now with Panini. Yeah, crazy. Well, I know you got a lot of stuff going on. We appreciate it. I'm glad we finally made this freaking happen, you know. And, uh, you know, we'll have to do it again. And tell everybody where they can find you on social media um, to follow you and, and, and your shop. Absolutely. So it's Mike Stadium Sports Cards. We're in Aurora, Colorado. Easiest thing to do, just type in Mike Stadium Sports Cards. Figure out the way you want to communicate with us. If you want to be Facebook, Twitter, if you want to be YouTube, whichever way you want to be part of the party, please do. Mike Stadium Sports Cards, love to have you be part of the party. Definitely. Thanks again, Mike. Absolutely. All right. See, that was a fantastic interview, even though my voice was almost gone. But Mike made it seem like we only talked for five minutes because uh, he's just a great, a great guy. Great to talk to. One of the most loved guys in this industry as well. I mean, even though he is uh, a Rocky and a Bronco fan, uh, we still do love him, uh, even though, you know, he's a meme from with the with the Nugget, with the Jokic brothers. A Nugget fan. I think he's an Avalanche fan. Avalanche are good. Avalanche are good. They are good. And uh, really ambassador to the shops. I mean, he's kind of the go-to guy for the shops. And uh, he's just a legend. He's just a legend. So, uh, But now it's time for the giveaway. And we were talking about concerts with Mike. So we want to know. We're going to be giving away a box. And this is an empty one. You'll be getting one that's full. Uh, a box of uh, Prism 2021 draft picks. We're going to be giving that away. We want to know what your favorite concert of all time was and what year it was. Hopefully you can remember. Ooh, that's a hobby box, Doug. Yeah. That is a hobby box of I think he, 2021 Prism Draft Picks. To be honest, I think, I, think he meant to, I think he meant to grab the H2, but he, no. uh, he, gra he grabbed the hobby Feeling for you. Man, well, you guys, you, know, you guys just didn't give anything away. So I would have grabbed the me. H2. It's time for you guys to uh, pony up and give some stuff away. Just coming out of uh, mine and yours and, and Cody's check, since you guys didn't give anything away. It's coming out of a check. And uh, we'll find a winner. But I want to know, because I'm a concert guy, so I want to know what concert was your favorite concert of all time. So uh, Lollapalooza Limp Biscuit. <laughs> yes. All right, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in. Next week, the hype episode 200 is going to be ridiculous. So, and we're also moving into a format where we're not going to necessarily be live, and I know that's going to crush some of you guys. Um, but it's just easier for us to film some segments ahead of time and uh, get the content all edited up. You know, maybe you know, get my voice sounding better and stuff. Make make uh, you know things better. So. We, we, may, we may jump back into some live segments, but it's just easier to edit everything Man, together. I don't know why you said that, dude. I was just going to roll out and just have it seem like it's live. Hmm. But if somebody asks you a question, what do you do? Or, uh, I'll just once, like every segment, I'll just like shake my head and go, yeah, whatever you guys say in the chat, I agree. <laughs> I agree in the chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm drinking Windex. Yeah. I'm, no. drinking, I'm drinking Windex. That's right. No. Kombucha. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm well, off. The, I'm off the booch. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm off, off the stuff. I'm off the booch. All right. Well, this is it for episode 199.5, our national recap. 
thanks again for everybody for listening and we'll see you next week on 200 don't miss it it's gonna be insane you're gonna watch the youtube premiere because uh, i don't know we may we may pop two bottles we may eat weird stuff i don't know we're gonna do some crazy stuff peace out